Good evening, everybody, and welcome back. It's a new homework video. Um, Sammy here at Sammy J Stitches, and with me tonight is Sarah King from Our Stitching Kingdom here on Floss Tube. Um, one of my very good friends from Virtual Stitchers. Um, we, we, tonight we have, um, of course, Magical Stitches, uh, our Cross Stitchers Journal and Daily 30, plus Crystal Academy, because Sarah also works on that one, plus we've actually been doing some stuff in there lately. Mm -hmm. Um, we'll touch on her with go because you've already seen mine four times now. <laughs> and then, of course, however you keep track of what it is that you do. Okay, so first and foremost, we have Magical Stitches this week, and it is a highly interpretive week. So when I say that, what I want you to really think about is how can you tell a story? How can you relate your whip to these words and um, if, if you feel confident in that, put it up there, let it go. Um, this, this week is a lot about creativity and what works for you. So we don't need a million questions, just tell us your story. And I like it when it's more creativity and like thinking outside the box and kind of, oh, well, this could work this, this, and this, and it can also work this, this, and this, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Well, and it's really good for those, like we, we try and change it up. We try and think about those that are only stitching on one whip. So like last week, thousand stitches, one whip. We try and think about those that don't like to stick with one thing very often. So sometimes you'll have a week with five things, 200 stitches each. Um, we have ones where you really have to think about it or really find that whip that works. And then the ones where you can be more creative. We, we do, we try and change it all around so everybody at some point gets something they like and everybody at some point is gonna have something they can't stand. Yep. That's just the, the nature of the beast. Yep, exactly. So, just like life. <laughs> now, they are still in the process of writing up homework right now, so I cannot read it off to you. Um, and I don't know their creative story, but I do know that we are at camp and just like a school, a camp sometimes has um, like lessons, right? And so this week it's going to be a vocabulary lesson. We're going to use some of those words that describe Hades because um, he is a big focus in, in this part of the book. So number one, levitated. I feel like this one's kind of easy. This is probably one of the easiest ones you're going to see this week. For sure. So what did it make you think of when you heard levitated? Um, levitated, so I think of, you know, floating up in the air, kind of. So if you have anything like with clouds or um, witches on brooms or Ooh. even like, what is it? I have one where there's kind of like cauldron bubbles. Oh, or yeah. swirls coming out those could be levitation so. yeah it's not like anchored down like touching mm -hmm. something else in the um i think something else too is quakers quakers oh. are really good because their their pieces are just kind of separate they're not touching yeah they're, they're not grounded yeah levitating within the project right so another way to think about that um yeah, which is on brooms. I really like that one. Um, <laughs> that is the trick in the tree. <laughs> mm, there you go, because she's there. <laughs> I, think, I think a lot of go-to would be clouds, um, planes, like anything that's kind of up in the air. Yep. Okay. Um, what about something that can levitate, but maybe isn't necessarily levitating in your project? Like if you have a bird that's been, that's like sitting on something, like mine is the trick in the tree, it has a crow, but he's not up flying. Um, or even like in magic study, I'm just looking at the corner right here because I've got her kind of up um, as a picture. You can see there's objects that could be levitated and maybe she's studying levitation. I'm not sure that would work, that le that studying part, but. No, but I think if you were to say um, that birds 
can levitate because okay so the definition it gives is to rise or float up on one's own mm-hmm. so a bird obviously can can levitate um i think i think that would be acceptable too as long as you make sure i'm bringing that explanation of right birds can levitate they can float on their own um that sort of thing so if, if it's obviously levitating in the piece or if it's something that can, just make sure you put that explanation with it. <clears throat> okay, word number two, grotesquely. <laughs> um, there's a couple different things that I thought about. One is my beautiful monkey on a throne because some people think that she's grotesque, but I love her. <laughs> but. Well- the meaning here, the definition they give here is bizarre, odd, bizarre, or unnatural. Yeah. Um, we're not necessarily talking ugly. We're talking mm-hmm. something outside of the norm. Right. That's true. Um, and she's, she's sitting on a toilet. It's very unnatural. Especially where she's in a dress with a little flower crown. <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of like my epic Pokemon for this one because they are unnatural they're not something you see on the day-to-day there are some that are very odd or bizarre shapes and that sort of thing and their names um, are kind of crazy too and you know <laughs> sometimes I'm like I don't I don't exactly know that I'm pronouncing that correctly um oh, and something else you can think of I'm I'm looking at Yellowstone because it's like right below but there are things in Yellowstone Park that aren't in anywhere else either like if you look at grand prismatic geyser that's it's a natural something in nature but it's not a naturally occurring Mm -hmm. like the phenomenon is bizarre in itself if you think about it but i i like the more creatures or you know something different yeah something um that just stands out to you as Mm -hmm. I, every time I say grotesque, I just I think of like an evil witch with warts all over her face, and right. I, but that is not the definition. So, because um, you're recording. <laughs> yeah. Um. What was I saying? Now I forgot. Grotesque, um, ugly witch, it's but not. it's really not. Yeah. That's so the. I think the best way to think about it is if you look at your piece and there is something in it that just strikes you as abnormal, unnatural, odd, bizarre, say that. Say that, you know, I was looking at Lady of the Flag and I think the way that she's holding her bouquet is bizarre. That that one maybe not work so yeah. much. You get, I, I'm mm-hmm. just trying to pull something out of thin air. Uh, well, I have like the magical creatures calendar from Clouds Factory. There's mm-hmm. centaurs, you know, there's creatures in that that are kind of bizarre. There's, um, what else is in there? Um, hang on, let me look really quick. Do, 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 do. There's a phoenix, you know, phoenixes are bizarre, can, can be bizarre. There's dragons, mm-hmm. there's satyrs, you know, uh, mermaids. Those are not normal. <laughs> right, right. Not naturally and, occurring. And just uh, tell us why you think that. That's, mm-hmm. that's the most important part here. Yep. Oh my goodness. Okay. <laughs> my husband is switching out or moving the washer and dryer to the new house and he's having all kinds of technical difficulties. Oh no. <laughs> okay. Number three, mesmerizing. Now I find this one, this is probably really easy too. Um, Something that immediately comes to mind for me is mermaids. I find mermaids mesmerizing. Or um, phoenixes, there, there's something else that just any, really, honestly, any mirabilia. If they, they're just so gorgeous that they just make your jaw drop, um, I find them to be absolutely me- mesmerizing. Um, the definition is hypnotizing or fascinating. I agree. Um, my blue Moroccan lace mandala. I yeah. mean... When I saw that, I mean, looking at the picture, like if you looked at the cover stock photo, you're just, it's pretty. But once you see that thing in real life, it's, oof, it's pretty, especially once the sparkles get on it and just you're hypnotized. You're just drawn in. And yeah, and I agree about the mirrors because 
some of those you just see them and you're like oh that is so pretty sometimes it's the beads or the mm-hmm. chronic that catch your eye sometimes like I find my hage mesmerizing because there's so many small stitches to create such an intricate picture. And I find a lot of times I sit there just kept my stitches. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> oh, so pretty. oh, and um, another thing that could be mesmerizing is we're both doing Dark Queen of the Sea. Her mm-hmm. eyes. Yeah. Her face just yes, her, oh. one of the best faces I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's yeah. she's absolutely gorgeous and natural looking, but not natural looking. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's different, but yeah, just she's gorgeous. She's just yeah, it, it was very well. I I haven't gotten to that point yet, but um, yeah, yeah, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Okay, what else do we got? Because that one, I think. Okay, here's one. Arrogant. It is what that says. Okay, arrogant. Yeah. Thinking you are better than everyone else. So a piece you think, I feel like Lady of the Flag because the way people have treated her, especially when she was so hard to get a hold of, mm-hmm. she she has a note of arrogance. Like she she is the better of the projects. Mm-hmm. Well, and like Chatelaine's when you hear like, especially because of the specialty stitches. And yes, you think, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, my... I have royal games and if you look at the expression on the queen of hearts mm-hmm. she is very like yeah like arrogant snooty falooty yeah. and there are some of the noras that kind of look snooty as well not just lady of the flag there's a couple that they they kind yeah. of are a little hmm. arrogant but not just um people because <laughs> that's like, where you go first of all but um What's another way to think about it? Um, like out of print, like you were saying, like with Lady of the Flag, um, Blackbird Designs, they kind of have that, especially when, like Dinah's the Trick and the Treat, there's a Prairie Moon when you couldn't get before they did the PDFs. Mm-hmm. And that one was another one. Size. Yes. Um, sometimes I feel like we, we relate arrogance to being big headed or being more important that that's also size can mean the same thing so if it's a like some of those samplers that are just like humongous like hey, yeah um anything that I find large I find to be arrogant it, mm-hmm. I'm better than you so I get to be bigger than you you know that whole everything's bigger in Texas thing because we're right right people yeah <laughs> That's where exactly you're like hey <laughs> I know a little something about that now <laughs> no. <laughs> some people think I'm arrogant you know. entitled <laughs> uh the last one for this week is defy and um the definition is to go against odds so one of the one of the places where we went when we were discussing this is um, a piece that you're working on where you defy the designer. So if you've done color changes, if you've modified in any way, you've defied what the designer put in place. Well, then that's a piece that mm-hmm. represents defying. <laughs> yeah. Or if you've made a mistake and just kind of like, I'm just going to go with it. Yeah, and just work around it. Mm-hmm. Um, goes against others. I'm trying to think. I mean, you could think of going against like the laws of nature, like mermaids, mm-hmm. or you know, because they're two different creatures merged together. Um, monster wonder, or yeah, the monster wonder whale from Alforce Embroidery. He has things growing on his back. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, maybe maybe something that has defied the odds, like survived, because I know some people have had like mishaps, you know, like um, a good one, my legendary creatures, because remember I had turned the fabric the wrong way mm-hmm. and I had to all, go through all that mess to fix it, but despite all that, it I finished it. You and persevered so, and yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, something that maybe you've made a big oopsie on but went you know what we're gonna figure this out or maybe it's something that 
you wouldn't normally stitch mm. it goes against you know like some people aren't sampler stitchers but then they see that one sampler that they were just I have to have that or they're not a Lizzie Kate stitcher and they see that Lizzie Kate and I have to have that I have to stitch that it's not normally something I do but yeah kind of yeah defying yourself as a stitcher if that I, think, I like that I like that so um the important thing is one is write an explanation with each one of them to make sure you use the vocabulary word in your sentence. I know that we've explained this in a bunch of like defy or gone against the odds. And while that is what defy means, use defy in a sentence. Mm -hmm. um, so just like you would in school, when you talk about your vocabulary words, make sure it is in your explanation. So I think that's the best way to guarantee that you're gonna get those points. It'll but get counted. Really, when it comes to those vocabulary words, I mean, unless you're just really, really far off, it's your interpretation. So as long as there's an explanation, you're going to get your points, your stitches. Yep. And for those uh, five, I do believe we're doing 200 stitches each this week. So I say that and I'll probably change it because I haven't finished writing it yet. But Right. And the penalty stitches is one. still yeah and penalty mm -hmm. stitches is still your oldest whip yes right okay yes. um make sure you when you go to do the homework you read everything because they do they they do a lot of work to make sure that they include all the information that you need whether it be penalty stitches or when is it due or all that stuff and then we have people that just they don't read the prompts they'll come into the chat and they'll ask a question i was like that was very clearly in the description so make sure you're in the description especially because i am not foolproof like when i come on here and we're throwing out these ideas i don't have you know a hundred percent guarantee that everything we say is going to be correct right. um it's our interpretation of the challenges so. okay so that is magical stitches for this week next week um the monthly will come out Mm -hmm. So we'll have Vicki here and we'll do monthly and weekly and all that next. Yay. Next week. We're already on the February is almost over. Yeah. I know. I spent half of it at work. Snowed in. <laughs> Snowed in. <laughs> <clears throat> all right. So Cross Stitchers Journal and Daily 30 is a challenge group. However, it is a closed challenge group. If you are not in it, um, you cannot request to be in it right now. They will open up randomly when they feel like it um so this is one for those that are actually in the group but also so that people can see how we would maybe double dip a piece between the two um so that's why we go over daily 30. Mm -hmm. um and before we get started on the weekly what are your zombie pieces Sarah? my zombie pieces are um let's see here I have Yellowstone, which I'm using also for my full coverage focus for um, Magical Stitches. And that's by Eric Dowdle. It's a really cool um, full coverage piece. I like it. And then Alice by Mirabilia is another, is my other zombie piece. Mermaid of the Pearls. And then Well Round, and Mir she's by Mirabilia. And then Mer Well Rounded by hands-on design that was a marker released from last year and it's four different um seasonal pieces all rolled into one which is kind of cool um i might be switching out a piece maybe mermaid of the pearls for my chatelaine because when i was working on it this last like because it got called for whip go too so i was able to really work on it and i got like 1500 stitches in it and it's like ooh, i really <laughs> want to work on this more so that might be swapped in so I, that's what I've been considering to, um, you know, because I got my amulet. I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a human, so uh, I got my amulet at the end of the month, and I'm like, <clears throat> I don't really see me changing over to zombie. Human seems to be working well for me, mm -hmm. so I may use that amulet to switch out a piece because none of my pieces are really close to finished, though. I mean, that is the trick in the treat is more than halfway done, so yeah. maybe. You got that page finished, so. Yeah, um, 
We'll see. We'll see. Right now, I'm content. I'm I'm okay with my pieces. How do you feel like Zombie Run is going for you? I'm really liking it. Um, I've seen a lot of progress, especially on um, Yellowstone. I'm using that. Oh, I'm using it for the full coverage focus in or the focus challenges that Semi Thames having too. Mm -hmm. And so I'm having to put a thousand stitches in it, but it's also half stitch. So I'm getting two thousand half stitches done on that thing every month. So that's been you're getting this season pretty cool. Mm -hmm. that's, that's what I like the most about like I've discovered since doing the zombie run and really scavenging hunt last year that I could quite feasibly be like a four project stitcher, four mm -hmm. or five instead of sixty. Like yep. um, I like the amount I'm getting done, but I'm also able to switch them up enough to not feel burnout on any of them. Um, but I've got 60 projects, so that's not how many it does. Yeah, I hear you there. I hear you. <laughs> um, okay, so weekly. Yep. This week is glass making week. And I'm not going to read the big paragraph. We're just going to go into the prompts. Okay. Uh, prompt one, stitch on a piece in which you are using a mixture of brands of flosses to complete. So I have, my Chatelaine is one of them. There's Gloriana, there's um, Dinky Dyes, um, and there's Treasure Braid. So there's Metallics. There's a lot of different ones. Um, even like my, some of my Lizzie Kate, there's Weeks Dye Works and DMC in that one. So you get Fancy Floss and you get that. Um, I think, oh, and then my Magical Creatures, I have, um, dmc and i have week style works in that one too yeah and i've got three choices anything with krynik because you're mm -hmm. not really stitching krynik excuse me um yeah so that's pretty easy like if it's got dmc and something else like mm -hmm. my epic pokemon it's all dmc so that one wouldn't count um actually most of my projects are really hmm. yeah because I was sitting there and I was like, wait, I don't have a ton that have a lot of fancy floss in them. Um, yeah. Some of the Mirabilias have like the water lilies or the, yeah, the, the silk in it. Yeah, because so. I've got a lily like that. Uh, Queen of the Dark Sea is going to have a secondary, well, like um, Petite Treasure Braid, I think. Yeah, there's Petite Treasure Braid. And in, in six, they used a little, no, did no, that was E12. But yeah, it's it's got it in there. So I don't think you have to. Yeah, it just has to be in the project list. And I guess you could always, you know, take a picture of the floss right. list. So, um, stitch on a whip that has two things fused together. Don't overthink it. <laughs> well, if you had like, because if you look at like a bookshelf, the book is sitting on the shelf or a mermaid, human and fish. Right. How am I supposed to not overthink this? The um, if you have a flag pole because you have the flag and the pole right so they're yep. connected they're fused together mm -hmm. okay I would think it's just they're connected they're touching somehow mm -hmm. so like even like your lady of the flag she's holding the flowers in the bouquet so her hand and the flowers or her hand in the flag pole or right gotcha Okay, next. Stitch on a piece that has both something liquid and something solid in the design. Well, any beach scene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm thinking Yellow Shores Stone. You got your rock and you've got your water. Yep. <laughs> um, maybe if it's something with like a teapot in the design, you know, you've got the tea and then the liquid. Or a cauldron. Cauldron. Mm hmm. Or a glass of lemonade or something like that because I know that they have some of those Mill Hill kits have like a lemonade. Um, I think that was one of them I see. Which is a little more abstract, but it you can see like the waves. So mm -hmm. it's got water and solids. Yep. Um, I think you're more hard pressed to find the liquid in stuff. I think everything's going to have a solid. Yeah, yeah. It's that liquid. It's that or if you can explain possibly that there's liquid in there, I don't think you have to see the liquid. You know? Both yeah. Something liquid and solid. Something liquid, yeah. Something that could hold the liquid at least. Um, 
Put stitches into a whip that you feel would be an easy project for a beginner. You mean Lizzie Kate? Yeah, Lizzie Kate's are definitely simplistic. Uh, Hands-on design is pretty good too. Yeah. Uh, and not trying... necessarily because they're smaller pieces, but that they're not a ton of color changes or counting very far. See, that's one of my yeah. biggest when I, especially when I first started cross stitching, was when you had to you had stitches over here and stitches over here and all that space in between that you've got to count. Even to this day, I have a hard time with that. But it was the most intimidating thing when I was. Do I really want to? I, I started out with stamped cross stitch. So the mm -hmm. X's were there. You knew how far you had to go. But then when I was like, I've got to count all those little holes and mm -hmm. get all the way over there. That's very intimidating to me. So any piece that doesn't have that. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, even if you think of like the little tiny, like the little fairies from Nora, not not the big huge ones, but like Miss Ladybug. She mm -hmm. Oh, she's she, super good. For and me. there's not a ton of color changes. Mm -hmm. You can start in the middle. There's there's not as much room to mess up you know so you could even get some of the fancier designers but think of their smaller less intense pieces I guess yeah or like Dinah's the trick and the treat because it's all one color then you're not having to um when you're learning a pattern when it, when I started teaching my sister-in-law to stitch one of the things she got intimidated with most is all the different little symbols what does that mean there's so many of them well, each one's a different color. So the less colors you have, the less intimidating and better for a beginner. So even a monochromatic might be a good mm -hmm. choice there. Yeah, or a, a, even a Quaker that's, mm -hmm. you can work on those little motifs. One at a time, just take it. One at a time. Mm -hmm. And they tend to all be symmetrical. So once you've done one, you can kind of do the rest of the sides all the same. Yep. That's good too. Okay. Stitch on a whip of your choice, and for each color you use, tell us what you'd add to molten glass to produce that color. The sillier the, sillier the ingredient, the better. Okay. <laughs> so this one, um, we can't really like. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but like right now, I'm working on Epic Pokemon. So like I'm working with yellow. I could say I would add a banana to get the yellow color. Mm -hmm. um and for the blue maybe i would use some blue bonnets like flowers mm -hmm. uh, something like that so each color that you use you have to kind of come up with a yeah um i'm working on dark queen of the seas right now i could use um grape jelly for the purple because that's what i'm doing <laughs> and then i could do so i'm almost done with our hair and then i'm probably gonna go like the seaweed or the coral and the seaweed's green so i could use spinach or mm -hmm. even like they said on here, um, copper oxide makes the bluish green. Mm -hmm. So, well, that is that is using some. I wasn't ever good at science. You're not getting any. <laughs> I just cheated in red, so you know. <laughs> okay, and then lastly, we have of course the thirty minutes a day. <laughs> um, you know, I'm I'm stitching on the same project thirty minutes every day uh some you can use different projects each day and you can stitch for more than just 30 minutes it's kind of like a minimum yeah um, you just can't count those stitches into your anything. other stitches yeah right. anything else mm -hmm. yep um, so i've been working on a butterfly dimensions kit that um i'm supposed to be stitching for a co-worker so that maybe someday someday it will get finished and see, I always forget about the day that that portion of it. It was that daily thirty because it's like I get home or I get to stitching, and I really want to just go. Yeah, I've heard. I, I've in the past I've forgotten about it a lot. I'm. It's something I'm trying to work on a little bit more because I want that piece to get some love. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that is daily thirty for this week. Next, we have Crystal Academy. Now, um, we had our dorms kind of rearranged. Mm -hmm. um, some of them went bye-bye. Uh, <laughs> I've been talking to a toddler a lot lately. Um, okay, so your previous team was? The Wendigos. But they're gone. They're gone. And we got absorbed by the Gemsbok. They're kind of like little antelope-y looking guys. So 
and it's been really cool. It's been a really fun chat. So I've really enjoyed it. That's good. Um, I was in car car before we did win out. So I am still car car. We absorbed. I'm trying to remember. Pushtaka. Pushtaka, yeah. Pushtaka, because we got Natalie. Um, and, and of course, I'm sure there's been an, a few others thrown in because like one lady, I, I think she was a commuter before. Mm -hmm. So uh, we now, instead of having, we started out with eight people last time. Yeah, eight, uh-huh. And then this time we have 19. Mm -hmm. um, so and, and so I, that was the part that made me the most nervous because it's hard enough um, coordinating eight people. And now we have 19, but so far so good. Like my team is great. Everybody is playing nicely together and claiming nicely and, and work doing, holding up their end of the, you know? Yeah, answering questions where they need to be answered and yeah, not being like snarky or anything. Yeah, same thing with us. And the, there were, I wanna say four Wendigos that were left out that wanted to continue because some people just didn't want to do you know couldn't couldn't handle doing another challenge group type of thing and so they just you know decided to leave and when we got absorbed us four just went with it so i there's people in there that i already know which is really nice so right yeah yeah i think we had five and then so we got 14 new people <laughs> mm -hmm. um <laughs> but yeah so for, so that's going well we are at the end of our first week of classes, mm -hmm. but our, our classes go for two weeks. Um, so if you haven't thought about this, then here's this. They haven't released next week yet, though, so I can't really talk about that. Um, but before we get into that, we're in a pop-up event right now. Mm -hmm. Can you want to tell us about the pop-up? Yes, I will. Let me find it really quick. Um, basically what happened is Lucy and Caitlin and Hannah were playing around in the, um, library and somebody thought it was a good idea to do a, a pen that would never run out of ink. And instead of it running out of ink, we've got little squidlies running, or octopuses running around. And so we're having to do stitches for to catch these little octopus <laughs> octopi <laughs> and if you've not learned any i'm just trying to find the post where they put it i think it's in the announcements i think so i see the come on ladies where is it oh, come on hang on hold please I thought it was in the announcements. I wasn't seeing it though. Oh, there it is. So they were eating brownies. I think there was something in the brownies. I really, really think there was. <laughs> but um, okay, so basically we are needing to, um, and it can't be double dipped with your homework assignments or new student orientation. And we are needing to do either 100 stitches per um, octopus if we've not completed a homework assignment. So if you've not done this week's homework yet, you have to do 100 stitches per to catch one. And then if you've completed at least one homework assignment, but we've not earned the spell, which is completing 40 assignments because there's 19 of us now, mm -hmm. um, you have to stitch 75 per. And that's what I'm doing because we've, I've earned at least one um, or done at least one homework assignment and then if you've earned learned either is it pavobus or comovus those are the two um, spells we're learning this week it's 50 and then each octopus will earn you 10 dorm points and commuters um, they're closing the portal on February 22nd on Monday um, the commuters can donate their points to a dorm of their choosing so you know, you've got the Karakaras or you've got the Gems box. So we would both be happy yeah. to have <laughs> have your donations of octopi. Mm -hmm. um, the nice thing I like is that we can you can bulk stitch. You don't have to take a picture every 75. You can stitch 642 mm -hmm. stitches. Do make sure you post your your starting photo with the code word and it's in there. 
Um, it's in the picture in your um, album. And your starting point and your ending point, just make sure you have that code word. So right. that's what I like about it is you can just go. And you can change whips. However, you cannot change mid whips mid, like if you have to do 75 stitches, which is also what I'm doing. Um, you can't stitch 30 on this whip and then 45 on the next whip. You have to have it all in the same. And then um, if you do change whips, you're not allowed to go back to it at any point. So like the first one I stitched on for this was, what did I work on last night? Oh, my Harry Potter project. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I did 450 stitches on it. I'm switching tonight, but that means I cannot go back to Harry Potter the rest of the weekend. And this is just a pop. It's just a weekend long. Yeah. So, I mean, that's not that difficult. Not a big deal. Yeah. Um, and I'm already at least 100 stitches into Pokemon. Um, so, my dorm chooses to set homework aside and work on the pop-up. And that's what we're like, doing, too. We, we want to get our homework done. Da -da. So, um, yeah, that's, that's the weekend pop-up. All right. So for the week one and two, uh, spell number one is Provavis. I think that's how you pronounce it. We're going to, it's like Pokemon. You just say something and you might be right. Okay. Uh, number one is a prey in the design. Mm -hmm. So... This is fairly easy because pretty much anything is prey to something. Um, I know I used Anzac and it has like squirrels and rabbits. Those are all prey to whatever bigger animals after them. But even us as humans, we can be prey. I mean, bears, bears or lions, kangaroos. And tigers, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anything, any Australian animal because they want to kill us. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I felt like that one was pretty easy. Uh, yeah. Second one is something with a cave or a tree. Um, that would be, you know, that might be a little bit trickier, but I mean, if you have a sampler, usually those have a tree or. I feel like you know, tree is going to be like the most prevalent cave unless you have like a full coverage um i think there's like cave in um once upon a fairy tale i think there's a cave yeah somewhere or a cave looking you know area <laughs> Gotta uh, get some you, sleep there <laughs> i actually slept pretty good today um anzac mm -hmm. <laughs> Kind of abstract, but it, there's still a very big tree. In fact, I think the tree is Australia or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, it's abstract, but it's there. I know, um, unlike Little, little House Needleworks, they, they all have little trees in the design. Anything with a house will usually have a tree. Yeah. Um, anything Christmas tends to have a tree. Yep. Okay, now here's the tricky one for this week is landscape with no human see and i don't have any because my yellowstone is a landscape but there's humans in the design i used and and i actually pulled out one that's not in my my bag for the week mm -hmm. I was mad. and um i pulled out uh i think it's country cottage needleworks love makes a house a home oh uh, because it's it's got a tree and a yard but it doesn't have any people that makes sense yeah so um i just did penalty stitches on that one so yeah and that wasn't an option last year or last no. year. so that's yeah. how does that work penalty so the penalty stitches um i think homework is at least this week the homework is 200 stitches and penalty is mm -hmm. only 100 more it's only 300 so you can do whatever. And um, also like last year and this year too, if you wanted to use the same whip for, you had to find, like I say you wanted it. prey, you had to use a different explanation for it. Mm -hmm. So now you can use prey, use it for prey and then do penalty stitches for prey as well. Right. So that was really cool because you could still get more get your stitches in so you can earn the spell and help your dorm earn the spell 
but not have to worry about starting something new or continually switching because I know there's people there that you know also do monog- you know they're trying to you know let people who are monogamous stitchers be able to feel that they can do stuff too so that makes sense yep okay so the other spell we have to learn is camovis mm-hmm. that do we like right <laughs> um so the, so there's three tests for this spell also the first one is predator in the design again i mean unless it's a worm <laughs> It's probably a predator. Yep. Um, I use the cat. So the yep. cat on mine is the trick in the treat. And I think a mouse thinks a cat's a predator. I just. Mm-hmm. I or believe- the crow would think the cat's a predator, or the crow could be a predator too, or, you know. I mean, anything that eats something other than grass, mm-hmm. a cow yep. may not be a predator. I'm just saying. No, probably not. A duck. Sheep. I mean, there are some evil ducks out there, but. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I use my vine as the trick in the treat because I have a cat. What did you use? I used Yellowstone because there's bears. There's okay. bald eagles. <laughs> there's humans because humans can be predators as well. You know, we like to hunt and fish. <laughs> I'm a meat eater. I'm... Mm. Yes, I like my steaks. Right, so the other one, and I use that as the trick for this one too, is something primarily in dark colors. So most of your whip needs to be on the darker side. Yep. Um, my vine is the trick in the treat is all black. Yep, that's a little dark. That's predominantly dark anyway. <laughs> yep. I use my blue Moroccan lace because there's lots of really dark blues, um, like midnight blue. It's, mm-hmm. you know, this color. So used a lot of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. And the last one is something with an element that you find frustrating. I found this prompt frustrating. <laughs> I, just because my brain didn't readily go, okay, I'm going to do this. Whereas everything else I knew immediately what I wanted to work on. But that one, I, I wasn't, nothing jumped out at me. Um, I had you know, I think specialty stitches because mm-hmm. specialty stitches can be frustrating. Um, if you've made a mistake and are having to frog it out or pick it up after having to frog it out, like my Alice, I'm still kind of frustrated at that one because, you know, when you have to take out eight, five to 800 stitches <laughs> before you can continue on. <laughs> you know, um, thinking about it, my lady of the flag or really any Nora Mirabelle or whatever Mm -hmm. one of the things that I do on principle is I bead last yep I also find that frustrating having to stitch around like where the beads go and and remember that to leave alone for the beads and Mm -hmm. not go looking for some floss that needs to go in there so I find that really frustrating like Mm -hmm. I'm not frustrating enough to risk breaking beads with my Q-snap but frustrating enough that I, I just don't like having to leave all the beads for the end yeah yeah it, or like some people don't like stitching with metallic floss mm-hmm. yeah so that could be another one yeah yep. okay so I think I'll be pulling out lady of the flag for that there you go glad <laughs> I could help <laughs> all right that is crystal academy for this week um this coming up week we will get two more spells and three more prompts each um but I don't know when they'll release that tomorrow. Monday. Monday. I feel well, like no, they release it Sunday, and then we'll get, the, and then we start Monday. Yeah, at at noon. So, yeah, they're, they're a little different on those times. Okay, so with go this month, we called the numbers four and twenty. What were those for you, Sarah? Those were um, my magical creatures calendar by Clouds Factory, and my blue Moroccan lace by Shadowland. Um, the way that I have my goals for go set up this year is um, I'm doing dates. So I use on each of those is how I have them set up. And then I also have them, I have my, I've called them focus projects. So I have one, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I have 12 that I've put on my board. And I put, so I put a couple of them 
you know, a couple different times. Okay. That makes sense. Um, and all of yours are the five days or whatever? Yep. Mine are all five days. Doesn't I matter. Feel the need to complete them within the month that they're called or just by the end of the year? I want to try to complete them within the, the month that they're called. So Ali will usually try to work on them for um for prompts to get mm -hmm. them in and I mean if I put 100 stitches in one day I'll call the, I'll count that a day I don't have like a set number of stitches I have to put in each day so I could work like I think I still need a, a one more day on magical creatures so I'll try to fit that in next week sometime okay so now what yeah. happens if you don't complete your five days within the month I will just roll it over to the next time it's called or try to get it done um if i have any extra time at the end of the month of the next of the next month i'll okay. try to roll it over pretty much so so you don't but you don't like okay well i can't complete b1 anymore because i didn't no. finish it's nope i'll let it roll over i'll let it roll over we're, we're cool that way <laughs> and now if you've already worked on let's say blue rock in least five days and it gets called in march is it automatically completed or are you making yourself do it again in that month nope i'll do another five days so okay. it's five days each time it's called nice yep so i'm getting at least 10 days worth of work on some of these and some i think i have on there three times for some might get 15 days right. of work awesome and in addition to like yellowstone i have on there my i have my zombie run pieces on there so mm -hmm. like when I Alice was called, away. yeah. So I can kind of double dip on those days, which is nice. Nice. Already, and how do you keep track of My your stuff? challenges and your stitching and all the all the things that go on in your brain? I have a Mickey Happy Planner, <laughs> and so I don't use it really. Like I've got um i've printed out the zombie run sheet mm -hmm. and so i've i've printed it out that way and then i've got my whip list so i can mark if i've gotten any finishes none this month yet uh, but <laughs> happy winners. you can and move it so these will get moved from month to month right yeah that's so, what and then where's my so for this week I had it written what I have to work at the top I've been putting like the monthlies or if I had like my whip go I'll put that there and I'll put okay I've worked on blue Moroccan lace and then when I've gotten my fifth day I'll mark it off and then I'll do my zombie run pieces because those are like my priority is my whip go and my zombie run Mm -hmm. um and then I go to Cheryl's I usually do the monthly on daily 30 so that's the priority there and then it's my weekly for magical stitches and then Mono um, like stitchopoly is I just blend that in with whatever I'm doing and then the full coverage for semi-sane goes with my zombie run so I kind of combine those and then crystal academy I also have on here too so I just kind of put what I'm working on, how many stitches are needed, and then I just kind of check it off. Okay. So nice and easy, very simple. And um, so one of the things I'm doing this year is I'm more rotation based rather than challenge based. So I'm trying to make my pieces that I've picked for the week or whatever fit into the challenges. Are you doing that? Or are you picking, or are you letting the challenges pick your whips? I'm being more, I'm the same. I'm being more project-based, you know, mm -hmm. these, these are my projects. These are my focuses. So like I said, the whip go is, is my focus. So if I'm, I try to fit those in as I can zombie run, especially at the first of the month, I try to get that knocked out as quick as I can same. because I want to be able to try and get other things in um, mm -hmm. like in January, cause it's a little bit longer month. I was able to get my, my whip go whip go goals. So hard to say, <laughs> got those done, got my zombie run pieces done. And so I picked up, um, my cells that I was behind on. 
So mm -hmm. I was able to finish my um, Linen and Threads 2021 or 2020 sale. And then I picked up Dark Queen of the Seas to work on that one. So yeah. that's where I put my extra. And then if I had a whip goal goal that I hadn't met, that's where I'd throw it is that end of the month. So, but yeah. I'm trying to, I'm going to do penalty stitches where I can on like Crystal Academy or, you know, just do penalty stitches on my oldest whip and get some stitches on that <laughs> if I need to. So, but yeah, it's more of a, I'm not letting the challenges pick my projects. I'm saying this is what I need to get done. Yeah. And that's what I'm doing too. And in that, I have found where um, some groups, there are times where I just don't stitch for them and that's okay. okay. You don't have to have to do all the stuff all the time. Mm -hmm. So um, like this week, because I change projects every night, getting a thousand stitches in one night isn't something I could do anymore. It was something I could do last year, but for whatever reason this year, I can't. So I didn't even try to, well, I take that back. I picked a piece. I got what, 600 stitches in it. And I called it good. And I turned in that homework because every stitch counts in magical stitches. And so I may not complete it, but I complete something towards it. Um, but I don't, I don't, let it make me work on something more often than I'm ready to work right. on it. Because that I think that I think when you let the challenges dictate your projects, especially if you're not starting anything new, because I'm trying not to start anything new this year. Um, and when you let the challenges dictate your projects, that's a good way to kill your stitchy bug. And mm -hmm. there were times last year that I'm just like, I really don't. And you feel kind of that pressure sometimes. And I know I know the group say no pressure and stuff like that, but there's that pressure on yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And I start to like, feel guilty, especially because I've been helping to run magical stitches and then I'm like, I have, I barely stitched for it. And I'm like, I'm letting everybody down. I know Vicky tends to feel like that sometimes too. And it, we have to sit back and remind ourselves, nobody's, this is not life or death. Nobody mm -hmm. is depending it's, on you. It's so. just stitching people. It, it's just stitching friends. It's all about motivating the stitchy bug, um, not killing it. And mm -hmm. so pick pick those groups that help to motivate you. I find Zombie Run to be a great one. Um, in, in Magical Stitches, maybe the cabins, because you don't have to have a specific piece. It's just about the amount of stitches. Um, and that one could double dip really well with other things mm -hmm. from other groups. Um, I know there are more groups out there than we discuss right here. Um, we've got Enchanted Stitches, Supernatural Stitching, if you like the TV show Supernatural. Um, there's the Mythological. There's just no new starts. There, there's just a, a plethora of groups out there, and it's all about finding the one for you um, and not necessarily trying to have to do them all because I've seen so many people overwhelm themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, you know, even where you get like Daily 30 is closed and Magical Stitches is now closed and Semi-Sane is sometimes open and closed, you know, but even if you can't get into those groups, do a zombie run on your own, mm -hmm. you know, and just kind of, because I know that there's been some people, I, was it um, Snark and Spark, Emily, she did that for a little bit. And I think Angie um, did that for a little bit when she wasn't, when they weren't in. And they yeah. were just like, well, I'm going to follow along because of the homework videos. I'm just going to do my own thing, even right. though I'm not in the group. So it still yeah. can motivate you. Homework videos, write down the prompts, see, see how well you would do in the group and even less pressure because you're not actually in the group. So nobody's going to know if you don't complete it. Mm -hmm. um, if you want some accountability, the, throw a comment down below and we'll check in on you and find out mm -hmm. how well you're doing. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Alrighty. Well, that's it for us tonight. Um, I will be back next week with Vicki from Reading and Stitching our Magical Stitches because it's time for the monthly again. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, Sarah, for joining us. And we'll see you all next time.